Hi, my name is Martin and I'm here to show you how to use one of our flush clips to purge um, a Canon cartridge. Now, this particular model is for a CLI-8 but pretty much applies to everything other than a PGI-9 cartridge so you can use this for pretty much any of our flush clips. Right. In order to actually put the clip onto the cartridge what you do is you back up the cartridge over the clip like that and then clip. There's a silicon disc in there that seals it shut and obviously this pushes through that and allows you to push water into there. Now I've already pre-filled a syringe with distilled water. We use distilled because we don't want to put any minerals or other hard water um, aspects in there. Cleaning solution may also be a bit, to be honest, redundant because um, that also puts other chemicals into the um, cartridge. Unless you've got a specific blend of flushing fluid um, and I've checked that it won't cause problems um, with your inks, that's fine. Okay, so anyway, we've attached, um, put the syringe onto our clip. Um, this particular cartridge is still sealed, so all the um, ink is going to come out through the vent hole here. Uh, sorry, the ink and the water is going to come out through the vent hole. So over a, over a sink, obviously, what you're doing is just gently forcing water into As you can see, it's coming out of any hole available. It's a little bit surely forcing its way out. Now you also get water into the sponges area here. I'll show you how to pull that out. Now this is not a one-time thing. You do this about three, four, five times, as many times as it takes to flush out. So it takes a little bit of time now for that. Right, we've got water all the way through. Right, we want to try and get some of that water back out, especially this stuff here. So you put your finger over the vent hole, and then you pull. And that will pull a vacuum and all that water, then you let go. That avoids all the water being pulled back up when uh, you let go of the vacuum. Right, empty that out. Give your car syringe a quick flush. And then draw some more water into your syringe and repeat. Now, depending on how many times you or what you actually want to be using your flush cartridge for, you can do this one or two times just to get rid of any clogs that are building up in the, the sponge. Um, or if you're actually changing the colour, you'll want to do this until you're pretty sure that there's absolutely nothing left of the old ink. Um, so for example, I'm going to be flushing some cartridges to use with greys instead of yellows and things. So um, I'm going to want to do this a few times. And basically it's entirely up to you how many times you do this. The more thorough you are now, the more likely you are to get a refreshed cartridge that works. There we go. Now you can see from this that we're already getting a fair amount of the uh, ink out, but there's still a reasonable amount left over in this corner. That's because most of your ink is going, sorry, your water and ink is going out through here. So this isn't really flushing as well. That's why we need to do this a few times just to get that out. Okay. Here we fill. I'm going to do this just one more time because you don't need to see this repeatedly. Again and again and again to get the idea. If um, you're doing a German fill, you will get ink and water quite probably coming out around this area. Um, if you are doing um, a top fill modified cartridge, as in this hole here has been uh, opened up and removed, I haven't removed the ball from this by the way, but uh, if this is open, then you will find that water will flush that out. Um, quite readily and you won't have to do the whole thing of putting your finger on here. Um, the only problem is your sponge won't necessarily clear as much so you may want to think about taping that so that you can force more water through this to clean the sponge. So whatever you're doing, basically you want to clean that area and you want to flush this area out as much as possible as well. Now do be careful when you are using these clips um, not to to yank that way and the cartridge that way because you will break that bit off. It's not, you know, completely welded on to the point that it'll 
the cartridge and the clip will fail before it will. So yeah, take a little bit of care. So when you're doing this kind of thing, if you're not too sure about holding it and, and maybe going to snap, then get some tape and um, dry this area off, put tape over the top to block the vent and then pull on it and then you can just be holding this and you don't have to worry about any pressure here. So be sensible about it. I've been practicing this for a while. Ugh, so. Yanking the board out again. I've already excised the label. Push in. And pull right on. Push in. There you go. Gotcha. And a quick rinse. And then on to the next one. There we go. Right. One or two more flushes. To be honest, this is going to be a magenta cartridge anyway. So. Right, and you'll see that that's all venting out of the hole now, a lot, lot quicker, which means that we don't get all this come back into here. And this time, you'll see a load of ink jetting out that side. So, there you go. Yeah, that's it. That's flushing nicely. There you see. A lot less ink in there, a lot less being pulled back in here, a lot less ink in the sponge. This is why the top fill method is much better when it comes to this part of it. Now, even if you're not using the top fill method, you can still remove the ball, um, just get a plug, one of the low profile plugs and some aluminium tape. And um, when you're done flushing and everything, Put a low profile plug in there and seal it with aluminium tape over the top. It's effectively exactly the same thing that um, Canon have done when they put these labels on. They put the ball in, it's not airtight, and then put this label on top, which is. Um, and the whole point of that is it keeps it all nice and sealed so you can just basically mimic it. So you make your life a lot easier with um, flushing, especially if you think you're going to be doing it more frequently because, say, you're testing inks or uh, uh, something along those lines. You want to do a drawer when you've got a top fill in, you get a rubber bung, one that isn't going to get pulled into it. This one, seal the top, seal the vent, and pull. Allow the vent to release, pull through, vent any, any, any water, and repeat. That's another one done. We'll figure out best practice with practice the Try it. You will figure out best practice for yourself. Um, you'll also decide on how much of this you actually want to be doing. Um, yeah. This works for me. Actually, one thing worth noting at this point, if you look particularly carefully at your sponge, you'll see there's a slight line just about here. That's because there's two different types of sponge. This one is more about venting. This one is more about flow. This is denser than this one. So this one wants to let air in to replace the ink. This one is more about getting the ink from here into here. And there's another little sponge in the bottom here as well. This is why the original cartridges are so good. <clears throat> They're designed to look after not only ink flow but also airflow, which is something the third party cartridges are not quite as good at. No, I didn't flush that out, did I? Yeah, never mind. Alright. This is what starts to happen. When you've been doing this for long enough, I'm now on to cartridge number six. These videos. <laughs> I'm perfectly normal, honest. And lots of ink. You'll notice I've got the cartridge well and truly into the sink. This is a good idea. As soon as you put pressure on, if you have this pointed up here, I'm just going to demonstrate. That's your wallpaper. Mm. Funny. 
your wife won't appreciate it. Yes, I know this for a fact. <laughs> she is still my wife, by the way. Right.